If you've ever watched the show Storage Wars or have ever been to a storage unit auction, you'll have some idea of the excitement that comes when the lock on the unit is busted open and the expectant buyers get to take a look inside. Anything can be hidden away in one of those little garages, from straight garbage to solid gold and everything in between. For your entertainment, I've sifted through some of the luckiest and most surprising things ever found in storage units, some of which were worth a lot of money. Let's take a look. Amazing. Number 10, Classic Games. If you're anything like me, you'll have quite a few old console games stashed away somewhere waiting for a rainy day. Well, that rainy day could actually turn out to be payday, as one fortunate storage hunter called Renee found out in the first episode of Storage Wars 10th season. Renee bought the vintage looking unit for a cool $1,500, and when he started digging around in the back, he uncovered a huge dusty treasure trove of vintage electronics, including a Super NES Game Genie codebook, a Coleco Pong style dedicated machine, a Sega Master System game, and a Sega Saturn disc. Renee brings in an expert to help him evaluate the enormous mass, which is mainly made up of game cartridges, and after some extensive cataloging, the expert estimates that the unit could be worth around $45,000 to $50,000 in total. Judging by the size of the collection, it could take a long time to sell, but that's a serious amount of cash for some old pieces of no longer used gaming equipment. Number 9. Gold, silver, and French wine. In the UK in 2017, three friends put some money together to buy a mystery storage locker in Middlesbrough. The container cost 260 pounds and ended up holding some surprising objects. A vintage bottle of French wine made in 1943 when the Nazis still occupied the country, a handwritten court log which appears to be from Suffolk in the 1720s, and a didgeridoo were among the potentially valuable finds. Countless other rarities and antiques were found, including Royal Dalton and Wedgwood, along with a treasure trove of gold, silver tableware, and brass. In total, 16 storage containers were bust open with bolt cutters, with around 100 people bidding at the event at Magnum Haverton Hill. One even contained a car, while others contained furniture, medical equipment, kitchens, car engines, and tools. The eventual price of the container is actually unknown, but early estimates were in the high tens of thousands of pounds. Not bad for a 260 pound container. Number eight, Michael Jordan recruitment letters. A storage locker bought by a man in North Carolina seemed unassuming at first, until he found some unique documents related to basketball legend Michael Jordan hiding in its contents. The locker was home to two of Jordan's recruitment letters, including one from assistant Bill Guthridge and another from coach Dean Smith. The documents, which had changed hands twice, Golden Auctions founder Ken Golden says, were some of the personal items Jordan gave to Michael Jordan's 23, a restaurant that opened in Chapel Hill, North Carolina in 1999. In his previous auction, which ended in November, Golden sold a game-used jersey, formerly owned by entertainer Penny Marshall, for $51,518. Last month, Gray Flannel Auction sold the pair of shoes Jordan wore in his famous flu game for $104,765. Later, the recruitment documents were auctioned off and sold for more than fifty grand. $50,000 for recruitment letters? I wonder how much I can get for all my rejection letters. Number 7. Frank Gutierrez Art Storage war star Daryl Sheets, also known as The Gambler, took a huge gamble on a locker priced at $3,600. But his punt paid off when he found the storage unit was full of original art by Frank Gutierrez. The collection of art was estimated to be worth $300,000. Many critics say that the art is not nearly worth that much, and there isn't even a Wikipedia page for Frank Gutierrez, so it's difficult to say whether the collection holds that value, though it would still be a lot of money even if you knocked a third off from that price. Gutierrez's art is wild and wacky, so I don't know if it's going to be for everyone, but hey, at least Daryl can now get into the art game. Number 6. Pirate Chest in 2011, on another episode of Storage Wars, Dan and Laura Dodson came across a strange looking chest in the back of a foreclosed storage unit they'd bought at an auction in Contra Costa County, California. The Dodson soon received a quick fire offer from a mystery buyer, 
$1,000 cash for the chest, then and there. The couple who were unable to open the chest agreed. It took three people to lift the chest out of the unit, which should have been a sign that there was something important in it, and there was. The chest was at least 200 years old and contained around $500,000 in gold doubloons. A treasure expert described the treasure as pieces of eight Spanish gold dating anywhere between the 16th and 19th centuries. Looks like Dan and Laura made a pretty huge blunder agreeing to the quick sale. Who knows if they'll ever get luck like that again. Number five, Harley Davidson 8 Valve. This 1927 Harley Davidson 8 Valve racer with sidecar had been languishing in a Melbourne, Australia storage unit for 50 years before it was rediscovered in the spring of 2015. Harley Davidson motorcycles from the early 20th century are rare enough items by themselves, but when one services that was uncommon even when new, you know that you probably have an exceptionally scarce item on your hands. This particular bike, a circa 1927 FHA 8-valve V-twin racer complete with its scramble-type sidecar, was actually found in a barn and was one of fewer than 50 ever built. The antique Harley went on to sell for an impressive $424,000 when it came up for auction later that year. That's a lot of dough. This also reminds me of a find in Storage Wars where two new, pristine Harleys were found and were said to be priced at around $80,000 each. Critics said that you'd be lucky to get $40,000, and that's quite a good example of how Storage Wars often inflates the expected prices to build drama. But hey, that's showbiz, baby. And you know, just biz. Number four, Disney memorabilia. Back in 2011, a staggering 40,000 piece collection of motion picture and TV memorabilia was found in an abandoned storage locker near the town of Orange in California. The prior owners of the collection, who were motion picture industry executives, had amassed the trove of Hollywood memorabilia over several years. But when the rent in their storage unit fell seriously into arrears, the contents of the lockers were deemed abandoned and sent to storage locker auction where two lucky hunters bagged the lot. The contents included movie memorabilia, props, costumes, posters, scripts, and other ephemera, such as Disney and Bollywood movie production items, thousands of Disney animation production cells, original Tim Burton art, unreleased publicity photos, and many autographed theatrical posters, prints, and artwork. The collection in its entirety is thought to be worth more than a million dollars, though the exact price will probably vary as each individual item is auctioned off separately. Number three, 1937 Bugatti. In 2009, a car was found in the garage of an eccentric doctor, who was also a compulsive hoarder. Dr. Harold Carr had kept the 1937 Bugatti Type 57S in storage in his garage, amid piles of medical machinery, 1,500 beer steins, thousands of receipts, and even a World War II spy drone. After Dr. Carr's death, his family found the dusty old vehicle and decided to see what they could get for it at auction. When it was finally bought by a telephone bidder at the Bonhams Retromobile Car Show, in Paris, the price came to more than 3 million pounds, or 3.7 million dollars. It was one of only 17 of its kind ever made, and it was originally able to reach 130 miles per hour when other cars were only able to do about 50. The car was originally bought by Dr. Carr in 1955 for 895 pounds, the equivalent of 15,500 pounds, or 19,190 dollars today. That's one heck of a buy, whichever way you look at it. And while it's sad that this family had to lose their grandfather, at least they get a cool three million pounds to help remember him by. Number two, Action Comics number one. Action Comics number one is the comic in which Superman first appeared and is renowned as the most expensive comic book of all time. Approximately 100 copies of Action Comics number one remain in existence and one of those belonged to Nicolas Cage. That is, until it was stolen from his home in Los Angeles in 2000. Cage bought the comic for $150,000 in 1997 and thought it was lost forever before a lucky storage hunter found the comic in an abandoned storage locker in Southern California. Cage opted to sell the found comic in 2011 and netted $2.16 million as a result. Certified guarantee company, the leading grader of the quality of collectible comics, assigned Cage's copy a grade of 9.0 
making it the highest publicly graded copy of Action Comics number one. Another copy, however, was sold in 2014 for $3.2 million, making it the only comic book to have sold for more than $3 million for a single copy. Number one, seven and a half million in cash. In 2018, Dan Dotson was involved in yet another quick sale that cost him money, but this time, it cost him big. Dotson sold a unit to a man for $500, but he had just unknowingly unloaded the most valuable locker he's ever sold. A week or so after the sale, a woman approached Dotson and told him that her husband works with the guy who had bought the unit. She then told him that the man had found a safe at the back of the unit, which required a locksmith to get open. When they finally did get it open, they found that it contained seven and a half million dollars in cash. Things got complicated when the new owner was contacted by an attorney representing the former owners, who offered a $600,000 reward in exchange for the cash. The new owners declined the initial offer before settling on 1.2 million to return the remaining 6.3 million. Personally, I might have kept the money. What about you? The Datsun's co-star, Bargain Hunter thrift store owner Renee Nazoda, said the cash was most likely mafia or drug cartel related, adding that if you find money like that, there's probably a reason it isn't in the bank. It's sound advice not to run away with cartel drug money, so I'd say that's a good deal. What I wouldn't do for seven and a half million in cold hard cash. Well, there you have it folks, some of the luckiest storage unit finds in modern times. Have you ever participated in a storage unit auction? Would you give it a go now? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.